before I start replacing things on an airplane, I like to take some pictures of it to make sure I get the linkage and any wires and tubing back in the right places. When it comes to something like a carburetor, I like to hold it up to the original one to make sure that everything is in the same place. And one of the good things is that this Walboro is a direct replacement for this other carburetor. Walboro carbs from Valley View RC have this anodized aluminum plate on the front. I don't think it really adds anything to the motor other than looking cool. You can save yourself a lot of money by taking the time to compare the two parts to each other to make sure that everything is located the same. It's not uncommon for a knockoff carburetor to have something put in a different place. It may not be obvious, but it could be important later. I put a ball link on the throttle linkage, but that stepped it out far enough that it interfered with the muffler. One of the cast arms that came with the Walboro gave me more options, so I used that. I found that the spacer and reed block from the original carburetor also fit the Walboro, so I just cleaned it up. These parts are important, and we have to make sure that they're in good shape. It only takes a couple of minutes to look them over real well and clean them up. Before long, I was installing the new Walboro on my plane. I like it when things that are supposed to be a direct swap for the original actually are. This is the first time I tried running the Walboro on a new plane, and it fired almost right away when I put the choke on. And then with the choke off, it only took a few more flips and it fired. I had to tweak the throttle linkage because it was idling way too fast, but that's common when you put a new carburetor on. While I tweaked the throttle settings, I let the motor run for a while to build up some heat. I like to get a motor up to operating temperature and then go back over the nuts and bolts. The motor ran so good with the new Wabro carb on it that I decided to go ahead and put the cowl on it to get it ready for the field. The first day we had a chance to maiden this thing, it was about 30 degrees colder than it was when I set the carb up, plus it was really windy. I probably wouldn't do this flight with anything but a Walboro carburetor. It's the last thing I need now is to go dead stick with this thing in this kind of wind. I had left the Walboro just a little bit rich, and it stayed just like that all through the flight, all up to a point. It was hard to tell everything about the carb in this flight because of the wind, but it was answering the throttle well, and it seemed to run pretty smooth. Everything was going great, right up until it wasn't. I was varying the throttle quite a bit to see if it changed when it went through more fuel, and then it lost a bunch of RPM. That sounds awful, Tom. It was time to get this thing back on the ground and see what happened. I couldn't imagine a new Walboro changing that much, but it was obvious that something was different. Even though it was at a lower RPM, the Walboro kept it running. The wind was making this landing a lot more interesting than I liked. The motor had lost some power, but it was consistent at that level, and that made it a little easier to get the plane on the ground. It turns out the wobble hadn't done anything wrong at all. One of the plug wires apparently got stuck underneath the edge of the cowl when I put that on, and that popped off in flight, so I was down to one cylinder. My new wobble was looking better and better all the time. I didn't want to get carried away adjusting this carburetor in these conditions, because it was cold and windy. But I did want to see if it straightened out in the air, and it did. As soon as it got a little heat into it, the motor ran from it. More important is the motor ran even the whole time. The Walboro was doing a good job at stabilizing the motor. I had burned off most of the tank of fuel and decided to get this thing on the ground because my hands were shaking, I was so cold, and the wind wasn't getting any better. Now that I got the plane on the ground safe and sound, I'm kind of glad the weather was like this to put a little strain on this Walboro to see how steady it could be. And it didn't seem to mind if it was running into the wind or running away from it. The motor stayed running the same way all the time. If you need to put a new carb on your plane, you need to think about getting a Walboro. I think dollar for dollar, putting a genuine Walboro carburetor on your plane is one of the best investments you can make.